Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about the fact that bands are harder to train against than change. And there's a couple different things going on, both in terms of, of strength curves, of recovery, everything else. Um, and that's one of the things I pointed out to people when it comes to uh, my own max lifts, when they see me doing all this stuff with squat bench and deadlift, with change, with bands, everything else. And what you'll notice is that even though I have exact weights for all of these, my strength is not the same on them. In other words, if you look at lifts you guys have seen me do, uh, for example, you guys have seen me do as much weight with 90 pounds of change as I can with 50 pounds of band tension on the box squat, for example. I can do almost twice the chain weight. Now, the weight's the same at the bottom because if I'm using on those 425 pounds of, of weight for the box squat, we're starting with a similar weight at the bottom. But as we go up, in theory, my 90 pounds of change versus 50 pounds of bands is another 40 pounds at the top. However, I can't actually do it. So for me, that weight against 50 pounds of bands is a one rep max, right? I can only lock 475 against band tension with 50 pounds of the tension. But I can lock like 515 on the exact same exercise with the same plates against chains. And so we need to look at that a little bit closer and understand what's going on so that people do understand this. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that chains build strength and they measure strength to a large extent. Whereas in bands tend to measure your speed, strength, and explosiveness more so uh, when you're training against very heavy weights. And you start going above 90% of your wonder at max. So we're talking about training maxes or true maxes at that point. Because with 90% max is a training max, right? 100% uh, max is a, a true max. That's like a competition max. And what you generally find is that there, there's going to be a disparity between the two. And some of it's going to be your personal disparity between your strength and your explosiveness. Um, but it has to do with the nature of the way they pull. When you think about it, chains can create just a normal natural strength curve. In other words, they don't create any weird outside force. Uh, in other words, if you have chains on the bar because the links themselves are like individual tiny weights and you're basically adding metal weight as you go up, yes, it will change your deceleration curve. Yes, it will create contrast. It creates contrast because we're all stronger at the lockout than we are at the bottom, right? And anyone who doesn't believe me, go set up in a bench press and do a six inch range of motion or go to a squat rack and, and go to a six inch range of motion and start ramping until you get the heaviest weight you can lift for say six inches or eight inches or, or you know something that's a quarter rep or a third rep it's going to be stronger it's going to be stronger than your one rep max it's going to be stronger because you have a mechanical advantage right you have a different tension on the muscles and you have a mechanical advantage in terms of the bones like levers so it is actually easier in other words, it requires less force from the muscles themselves to lift that weight. Now, what you're not going to find, though, is that a lot of guys will say, oh, so if I can do 600 pounds on the lockout, but I can do 350 for the, for the full range of motion rep, normally I should be able to handle, you know, 600 worth of, of total change added at the lockout, right? And the answer is no, because usually that lockout strength, you haven't exhausted yourself at the bottom of the exercise yet right? You've used up muscle fibers getting a heavy weight moving out of the bottom. You don't have them in reserve like you normally would if you just did the partial. So no, you're still not going to be able to lock your the same weight you would with a partial, but you're going to get a reasonable strength curve, right? You're going to get a strength curve that's going to be normal. What you're going to find is that very frequently uh, you're going to be able to lift very close to your wonder at max out of the bottom of a lift that has no chains at the bottom. Right, so in other words, if your max is 400 and you add a bunch of chains, you're probably going to be able to get, unless you go extremely heavy on chains, but even with very large amounts of chain weight, you're usually going to be able to do very close to 400 out of the bottom. I bet you you'll be able to get at least 380, 390 in some cases, depending on how much chain weight you add, and still actually be able to lock it, even if you have 50 or 100 pounds of chains at the top a lot of times, right? You're going to be able to get within within 10% most of the time, depending upon how much chain you're running. With bands, you're not going to be able to do that. 
you're not going to be able to do that at all. If you were to go try to take, let's say you can do that with 400. If you were to go take and put 100 pounds of bands on 380 or even 370 if your max is 400, you are going to miss the lift. 90% chance you're going to miss that lift unless you are insanely explosive. And it's because the bands fight you. Bands inherently destabilize you and they try to jerk you back down. They create an additional eccentric effect. And it's completely unstabilizing. And like when you're training uh, deadlifts and you pull against against heavy bands, it trains your grip in a way that like nothing like you've ever felt. In other words, it actually feels harder than if you use the same amount of weight. So if you use 200 pounds of band tension and 300 pounds of, of barbell and you go to deadlift that, it's actually going to be harder to grip at the lockout than 500 pounds is. It's actually going to be harder, even though in theory it's 500 pounds. And if it had been chains, it would be. But it's because the bands, that's the weight that they pull once they're stable. The bands attempt to jerk you back down. They store energy into the band on the way up that rebounds on you. So the moment the weight slows down, as long as bands are pulling fast, yes, it's similar to chains if the bar speed is very, very fast. But if anything starts slowing down, as soon as the bar starts to decelerate or you get near your sticking point, the band weight seems to multiply. And it, it seems to take that stored energy and try to jerk you back down. So all of a sudden, what should have been 30 pounds of band force had it been a smooth pull, suddenly turns into 50. And it attempts to jerk you. And the bands will tend to jerk you out of your bar path unless you have everything set in perfect. They tend to destabilize you in a way that chains and metal weights do not. So if you're trying to train maximum explosiveness, bands train you to get fast because you have to. When you start pressing or pulling against, uh, against significant amounts of band tension, you have to go really, really fast. And if you don't, you're going to miss lifts. It's going to stick against you. So it trains you to accelerate and it trains you to accelerate through your sticking points because the weight gets really heavy and hard if you don't. And so you, it trains in your mind that you realize that you have to press super hard against that. And if you practice doing so, it works well, and then you catch that rebound at the lockout. But the moment the weight slows, the bands seem to just add up, and they seem to be a lot heavier than what their measured tension would be if they were just static. So it creates a completely different effect. So people need to remember that when you're dealing with band and chains, be very, very careful because if you've done, you know, 80 pounds of chain weight with a certain weight on a bar and you think you're going to go throw 70 or 80 pounds of band tension against it, you're going to be in for one hell of a surprise because it's not going to work out the way that you think it is. Not going to work out at all. And I'm not talking about reverse bands. I'm talking about bands over the bar so that they are pulling the bar down, not pulling it up. Um, and the other thing that you've got to think about with, with bands is that they also are harder to recover from. And it has to do with the eccentric effect because that same tension that's on the band stored tends to pull the weight down on the way down more. So it will try to speed up your eccentric reps because when you start at the lockout of a lift, uh, usually you have the bands trying to jerk you down. Right, It creates a stronger eccentric. And it's the same thing on your deadlift, even though you pull against the bands at the top. When you get to the top and then you start to come back down, the bands at peak tension tend to jerk you down harder than the weight would. So it creates an eccentric overload. Well, that eccentric overload, while it can have some interesting hypertrophic effects, because we know eccentric overloading, and that is what you are doing. That is basically a heavier eccentric than you would normally be able to lift through at least a certain portion of the exercise. We know it has a hypertrophy potential, but it also has a muscle, muscle damage potential. So the thing is, there's a reason we a lot of times you rotate bands and chains is because bands are not only harder, they'll force you to lift a lighter weight, they're harder to recover from. And so sometimes you've got to balance the two out. So from a pure training effect, especially for explosiveness, bands are, are superior. But again, they're harder to recover from. They're going to force you to use uh, lighter weights in general, which means sometimes the bottom of your exercises might get a little, a little bit neglected. And so by rotating through them, you, you do get better strength curves and you can balance recovery better. Because band work really, really does beat you up in a way that the chain work doesn't. Um, and they're both valuable tools, but people need to understand that there's a, a big, big difference between the two. And that's not even when we're getting into speed work or dynamic work. We're talking about with actual heavy work just by itself. There is quite a bit of difference between the two. 
And for anyone who's going to utilize these tools, you do need to understand the difference that the bands are harder. They are, they, they're going to make the weight feel heavier than it should. Your lifts are going to be harder once you start getting to really heavy weights. And they're, they're just a little bit harder to recover from. So it's something you have to factor in when you're balancing everything out. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.